hi guys welcome back to my channel so in this video I'm going to be working on a dog drawing in graphite and also a black color pencil and this is the drawing that you see me do a few videos ago where I showed you how to draw the fur and I went through more in detail about how I drew the fur and if you do want to get the real-time version of the whole thing on patreon then that is available for you guys so that you can watch it in real time everything from start to finish and actually follow along with me but in this video i just thought i would really talk about the process that i'm using a bit more like the general sort of outline of how i did this process the video is going to be going much faster than that other video that i did so if you want to see how i drew the fur slower then check that out as well and so this was the first time I actually decided to try colour pencil with graphite drawings. I've seen a lot of people doing this technique, seeing them use the black polychromos for your graphite and incorporate it to get those dark sort of looks to it. But I never really thought it would work. I didn't think the black would actually stick onto the graphite. But I was really surprised when I tried it how well the black polychromos pencil by Faber-Castell goes onto the actual graphite and it really does darken up the drawing without getting that really really shiny look that you guys know that I really dislike and that was one of the main reasons that I don't really use graphite too much is because I really don't like that shine but this black colour pencil really gets rid of that and it really takes away that limitation that the shine gives. So what I did was I only actually used two pencils for this as well, which actually sped up the whole process. I was really surprised to see that this whole drawing only took me just under nine hours. It was like eight hours, 40 something. And for a drawing of this size and this much detail, I was completely surprised by how quick that actually was. I thought it took a lot longer. I knew it was quite short, but eight hours, that was really, really shocking to me. And so I think it's partly because I was only using two pencils. I didn't have to switch between loads of different pencils and so it really sped it up. And because I kind of got into the routine of doing this same technique over and over again for each section of fur, it became really sort of quick and I became more efficient at it and faster at it as I got through the portrait. So if you guys want a really cheap way to create a realistic drawing, so you don't have to have loads and loads of materials, just one mechanical pencil, one black colour pencil and a razor sort of a razor stick, it was the Tombow Mono eraser and a sheet of paper and a blending stump, then you can do something like this really cheaply and quite quickly. You don't have to spend hours and hours and hours with lots of different pencils working up to build this masterpiece. And this is a method that I'm going to be using so much more. And I think it's going to completely change the way I think about graphite drawings. And I think you guys will be seeing a lot more drawings like this in the future. I would love to see how this technique applies to portrait drawings. So especially hair, or eyes and skin I'd love to see how I can use that black polychromos pencil to get some really dramatic looks and dark shadows in a portrait so I just want to talk a bit more about the process that I did I started off with the mechanical pencil and this was again one of the first times I used this mechanical pencil I bought it in a recent art haul that I did for you guys and I loved it so much and it's just so much quicker because I don't have to sharpen and that's one great thing as well is because I'm using a mechanical pencil I don't waste the time sharpening so I used the mechanical pencil to get in the basic sort of details of the fur the structure where the shadow is going to be where the highlights are and create that generalized fur texture and then I went in with the black polychromos pencil and I just used that to add the shadows and start to darken each section up and you can see right now I'm using that mechanical pencil to get in the basic structure go in with the black polychromos to build up those shadows and then what I'm doing is I'm using that blending stump to blend over the whole thing and this added value to the whole of the fur and I could just go in with the Tombow Mono Eraser and pull up the highlights and the flyaway bits of fur and this was a complete game changer the way I could use this technique and and render that realistic fur so quickly it was so great and actually so much fun it really made it fun to draw all of this fur because you can just kind of get into the groove of it you can just it's quite therapeutic because it's just a repeated process and you can get better at it the further on you go and the more you do it so I really really recommend trying this way of doing these sorts of drawings because again it's quicker it's cheaper and you don't have to suffer with the quality of your materials 
you can just plow your money in and your budget into buying those two really good pencils that are going to make you be able to create archival drawings that will last and you'll be able to sell and it's just so much easier especially if you're a beginner you don't have to worry about all these different grades of pencils you can just use a few different materials and get all of the, the different value ranges that you need in your graphite drawing so this is such a great method and like I said because this is going really fast I do recommend checking out that other video where I do the fur or if you want to see the whole thing you know the eyes everything in detail and follow along with me it is on Patreon as well as all of the other tutorials. So now that I've talked a bit about the materials that I used and also the technique I want to give you guys some actual tips for just creating animal drawings in general and drawing dogs and my main sort of overall tips on things to help you get that more realistic look to your drawings. So the first thing that I always recommend is if you're drawing fur always look at the direction the fur is going in, always look at it in terms of sections and clumps and I say this in every video that I do about drawing animals with fur because it is so important you really do need to look at the direction of the fur, the length of the fur and the way it flows and the way it curves you know the direction that it's going in is so important and that's why I keep mentioning it because even though I mention it loads, I still see people doing it and that being the main reason why their drawings don't look realistic. And they're also trying to draw in every single strand of fur rather than actually just rendering each clump separately and getting in those shadows, those highlights, and also creating flyaway hairs. That is extremely important if you're drawing fur. If you wanna break it up, make it look natural looking, really look at your reference image and you'll see that there's a lot of flyaway bits of fur going over different sections of fur. You know, you'll have some flyaway bits of fur just overlapping all of the different sections and layering on top of each other and this is what's going to give you your realistic look and you'll see in a minute how I do all of these flyaway bits of fur as you can see with that eraser pencil and it just really really does take it to that next level and makes it look more realistic. Another tip that I'd have for you guys, especially if you're drawing fur, is to build it up in layers. Don't worry too much about getting everything looking perfect on your first layer. Just work from light to dark. Build up those darker shadows as you blend it out. I like to blend with the blending stump and then go back in with the black pencil and just build up the shadows more and more until I get the look that I'm really, really happy with. You don't have to do it all in one go. It's great to build it up and enjoy the process of building up the fur and anything. It doesn't just have to be the fur. No matter what you're drawing, try and do it in layers if you're worried about going too dark. And I find another reason when I'm doing my critiques and the main reason that I see for people not getting the look that they want is they just don't go dark enough. Whether that's portrait drawing or animal drawing, any drawing really, compared to their reference photo, a lot of people are scared to go too dark because, you know, what happens if you go too dark and you ruin your drawing? And it's kind of that fear that's holding people back. Whereas it's really, really important to just get in those dark shadows if they need to be in. So look at your reference, identify the values you need. If they do need to be dark, near enough black, then get them in. Don't be scared to do it because it'll make your drawing look so much better if you do get in those darker shadows. One thing that I'd love to see you guys comment below is have you ever tried this technique with these types of pencils? What's your tips for doing graphite drawings, whether that's animal drawings or portrait drawings? And also one thing that I want to ask you guys is do you want to see more tutorials on using this technique? Was this enough for you with that other sort of video or do you want to see more things like this? And in general, what kind of videos would you guys like to see? I'll probably be doing a poll on that sometime tomorrow to get more of an idea of what you guys want to see in the future. So now I'm actually working on the fur on the body and this was slightly different because the fur on the body was a bit more sort of out of focus and there wasn't too much detail so what I decided to do was also because the fur was going in quite a lot of different directions it was quite curly in this area I decided to like obviously add the base layer like usual, add the black pencil, blend that out, but I used the eraser to create bits of fur and then I went over them with the blending stump so they weren't so bright. So another way that you could use this Tombow Mono Eraser is to use it to get out details that you want, not necessarily just highlights, but just details that you want to get out and then use your blending stump to blend over them and tone them down or even make them really dark if you want. But you can use the eraser tool to create texture, to create detail and that will really elevate your drawings as well and make them look a lot more realistic because there's not just one way you can use these materials and these tools but there's so many different ways.
Also guys, if you do want to know what materials that I use for this drawing, then I have got all of the materials I use linked in the description to where you can get them as well, if you guys want to check that out. Another thing that I want to mention is that if you're using the Tombow Mono Eraser and you're also using the black colour pencil, you will notice that when you try to say erase flyaway bits of fur or hair or whatever you're doing, if you try to erase over the graphite pencil, it erases quite easily, it erases the graphite relatively easily but if you then try to go over the black colour pencil it doesn't erase as easily so what you have to do is press down a bit harder when you're going over the black colour pencil because it's not graphite so it does take a bit more to lift and erase coloured pencil than it does graphite and that's just something you, that you've got to bear in mind and another thing that I will give you a tip on is that when I was using my little Tombow Mono Eraser and I did erase quite a lot of the black colour pencil you'll notice that the eraser starts starts to build up and get really dirty, it'll start to get black and it won't be as efficient It's as at getting those really fine crisp lines that you want and detailed bits of fur. So what I recommend doing is taking a little crafting sort of blade, a little sort of crafting tool and just use that to slice off the edge of your sort of eraser to give a clean edge again. Uh, or you could just rub off the bits of dark colour pencil that's accumulated on your eraser on a scrap piece of paper but what I just recommend doing is making sure that every so often you make sure that your eraser is nice and clean otherwise you'll find it hard to keep getting those really really clean edges and fine details. So now I started to work on the background and it was just like furniture in the background it wasn't anything super detailed and it was quite out of focus well I wanted to make it quite out of focus in my drawing I didn't want it to be the main subject I wanted her to really pop forward and even though the reference photo had the background quite in focus just like the dog I wanted to set it a bit back make it look a bit more three-dimensional and just blur it out and soften it out a bit more so what I did was I just didn't add lots of detail, I kept it fairly soft, I blended with things like tissue paper, blending stumps and all of that just to make sure that I'm just blending everything out, I don't want loads of super harsh details and lines, I want to keep everything super soft. So I used tissue, I used blending stumps and I also layered it very slowly and just built it up and up. I actually did use a Faber-Castell pencil for this, a graphite pencil, just so that I could cover the area quicker because the mechanical pencil obviously the lead is really fine so it had taken a lot longer so I just used the side of a normal pencil to do that and then once I'd done the background I just went and I add finish, added finishing touches using my Tombow Mono Eraser just to create flyaway hairs that go over to the background as well to again just make it a little more realistic and I just touched things up I wanted to look at my contrast to see if that was accurate any areas that needed to be darkened up I went in with that with that black colour pencil to darken that up and same with the highlights I wanted to see if I needed to brighten anywhere up especially because when you're drawing you might rub your hand and across certain areas where you've added the highlights and they might not be as bright anymore. But that's basically how I drew this dog. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I have so many real-time tutorial series available on my Patreon for you guys at just a small amount per month and you can get access to loads of real-time tutorials. So you can learn how to master colour pencils, graphite pencils, watercolours, all of that sort of stuff really, really easily with my sort of guidance and my voiceover as I'm actually doing the drawings. So I'll leave a link to all of that sort of stuff in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching if you're new around here feel free to subscribe and i'll see you later bye guys